Welcome back to 110 Daily on the 110 Sports Network. Listen, right now the Dallas Cowboys aren't America's football team. Right now it's the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers that are America's football team. And here to talk about America's football team is Coastal's own Sam Wiederhalf. Uh Sam's a part of the athletic department uh, down at Coastal Carolina. Sam, how you doing, buddy? Josh, I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well, man. It's good to hear your voice. It's been uh, it's been quite a few months since we were we were down at Butler together. So I'm um, I'm glad to hear you're doing well and have stumbled into this absolutely incredible uh, situation where you're you're not only employed full time employed, which I'm incredibly jealous of, but you're also <laughs> but you're also getting to day in and day out uh, talk about and be around a football team as as fun as Coastal is. Man, it's incredible, and I, I got to say, I'm really impressed with uh, the way you said Shauna Clears is correct. I Thank mean, you. First try, you you get it correct, which not a lot of people have this year. Um, we've had to tell a lot of broadcasters and put some videos out about how to correctly say Shauna Clear, mm-hmm. but you got it. I pre- <laughs> um, but no, you say what'd you say? I appreciate that. You know, I, as someone who has a last name that is consistently uh, mispronounced, I, I made sure to to get it right. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's 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 fantastic. Um, no, but I mean, you say you say stumbled in, and you're absolutely right. I mean, I I had an opportunity to uh, to work at this school because you know there there wasn't a lot of things going on. So it was back in June when I kind of started talking, and we got a plan in place in July, and I got here at the end of August. And you know, at the time, I was just thinking, yeah, I'll go work for a Sun Belt school, you know, Division One, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, have an opportunity to work in an athletic department at a time right now where there's not a lot of opportunities to do that. And next thing you know, 10 football games later, uh, we're on the national stage and playing really well. So it's been it's been a really hectic time around this athletic office. But, man, everyone's having a ton of fun. Nobody really expected this, obviously, mm-hmm. coming from a Sun Belt school. But, man, it's, uh, it's, it's just been really fun to watch. And some of the opportunities that – we've seen come here are, are once in a lifetime things. I mean, game day was here on Saturday and right. when's that ever going to happen to Coastal Carolina? I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's just been crazy. So a really fun time so far. And I mean, I got incredibly, incredibly lucky. I mean, what can I say? <laughs> so what's the vibe around this program right now? Cause not only is this a, is this a, a program that doesn't, that, that this is a, a season that, like you said, doesn't happen all that often but this is also a football program that hasn't been at the fbs level for very long this is quite a quite an incredible glow up's not the right word but but a rise to to college football stardom uh, for this program what's the vibe around around the program how do the coaches talk about what's happening the players talk about what's happening uh what's their headspace right now because I can I can imagine that I would be a little bit like I can't believe this is happening. Yeah, and surprisingly, that's not really the vibe that I get. I mean, this is the uh, this is the fourth year in FBS for Coastal Carolina, mm-hmm. um, and you know people don't really know about their time in FCS, but they were very successful. Right. Um, you know, went to the playoffs a lot of the years, uh, played teams like North Dakota State in the playoffs, and they had a good run in FCS, but. You know, I'm talking with athletic director Matt Hogue, who's been here since the start of the football team in 2003. He was actually the play-by-play guy and got somehow into the athletic director position back in 2014. Kind of a fun way to go up that route. Yeah. But, um, you know, I was talking with him a couple weeks ago, and I just said the question was, how, how have we gotten here? You know, because it's been such a fast rise. And he said, you know, yeah, it might have happened a little bit quickly than we expected, but we always expected to be – at this kind of position that's why we made the transition to fbs um and that's why you know we made a a lot of improvements around the stadium just a lot of improvements around the program because we expected to play at this kind of level now Mm -hmm. it's happening probably a little faster than people expected um but it's a it's a very welcoming time and people expected the expected to be here and you know the players obviously have a chip on their shoulder they were projected sure. last place in the Sun Belt preseason poll, which is just unbelievable. Somebody needs um, a new job, so these players right? need that coming in. <laughs> Somebody needs a new job. I, yeah, I, I don't know who voted on that preseason poll, but they didn't know Coastal Carolina very well because right. those the players knew that 
And, you know, they went into week one against Kansas knowing that they were picked last in the conference, and they went out and made a statement there. And it's just been all gas and no breaks for the Shauna Clears. And, you know, it's a really fun thing to watch. But, yeah, I, I, I think people expected to be at this level at some point, but, you know, not four years into the FBS program, that's for sure. So let's talk about this this last weekend against BYU in particular. How does a, how does a game like this, where a team has to fly twenty two hundred miles, how how does this happen so quick? I think this is one of the more fascinating parts of of what happened over the weekend. I mean, we got given one of the best games of the college football season thus far uh, between the Shants and and BYU. It wasn't supposed to happen, right? It took it took a COVID nineteen cancellation uh-huh. postponement for it to actually happen. Um, how does how does that happen so quickly? Um, and 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 furthermore, how does a team prepare for someone who's as dynamic as Zach Wilson and an offense that is di- as dynamic as BYU so quickly and hold them to a to a performance that not very many teams have been able to put, hold them to this year? Yeah, Josh, it was bizarre. I mean, I'm lucky enough to work in the office right next to our sports information information director, mm-hmm. uh, Kevin Davis, who just did a fantastic job last week with everything happening. But, you know, we go into last week playing Liberty, and Liberty is an old Big South rival that rival that we've had, and we were kind of renewing that rivalry this year, and they've had a great season. They were at number 25 at the time with just one loss. Right. Um, Originally, that's what College Game Day looked at that matchup and said, you know, we're, we're going to go to Conway, South Carolina and feature that matchup on our show. And it was around Wednesday. I was at the uh, coaches' press conference because I help out with that. And uh, we had breaking news that Liberty's uh, starting quarterback was going to be out with COVID. Mm-hmm. So that, was, that happened in the middle of the press conference, which was, which was around uh, noon on Wednesday. So... You know, I didn't really think much of it. I just thought, all right, you know, backup's going to have to come in for Liberty, and they're just going to have to – they're obviously going to play the game, right? I mean, they're going to be on game day. It's not like, it's not like they're going to cancel. Sure. And, you know, Wednesday I leave the office around, around 2 o'clock, go home. I took a big nap, you know, because <laughs> everything, everything that happens that's exciting always happens when I'm napping. Right, of course. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely. So I wake up, and my phone is blowing up saying, hey, you know, BYU – is planning to play Coastal Carolina because Liberty's about to cancel. And I was just like, where did this come from? Yeah. Because we have we obviously have no relation to BYU. I know they had a open week in their schedule, but, man, BYU, are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. So I walked in on Thursday, and it still wasn't finalized, and uh, I was doing an interview with our football play-by-play guy. And uh, the SID, Kevin Davis, told me, hey, it's, it's going to be BYU, so just prepare for that. So – you know, Thursday, this BYU game gets finalized. Game day still comes. Um, and it's just uh, it's such a quick turnaround. Now you're talking about not the 25 team in the country, but a top 10 team in the country. And you mentioned Zach Wilson, who was a, a Heisman candidate. Right. So I interviewed our, uh, our, I interviewed our defensive coordinator uh, yesterday and just kind of asked him about that turnaround. And, you know, he said it was tough. It was the craziest week of his life. And on Saturday morning – the morning before the game he's doing situational adjustments for BYU which he says usually gets done earlier in the week so it was such a fast transition and you know I I think the game kind of showed that both teams didn't really have a lot of preparation done because it was you know Coastal held the ball we held the ball for over 30 minutes and we were just running it mostly I mean we only threw for for 85 yards so we were mostly keeping it on the ground and uh, we were just sticking with our bread and butter. And this defense showed that they're the real deal. And Chad Staggs, our defensive coordinator, I believe is going to get hired somewhere after this year because he's just shown day in, day out that this defense can compete with the top of the, with the, top of the college football world. And that's what they did on Saturday and really shocked everybody. So let's talk about the the college football playoff. You, you get the new rankings yesterday. Uh, Coastal moves up five spots from 18th to 13th as, as someone who's a, a big part of, of not just a, a mid-major program, uh, but a program that is undefeated and that I, I think quite a few people thought should have jumped higher than they, than they actually did with their win against BYU. How does, how do the players, how do the coaches react, feel about that sort of thing? Because 
right? I I, I don't think anybody was ex- was expecting them to jump from 18th to to seventh, right? But but only jumping to 13th, it, it it sends a message, or at least it's going to be incredibly hard unless something ridiculous happens to even get to the point where it sounds like the college football committee uh, is is seriously considering the shots for for a playoff spot how does it how does that sort of information the way that mid-majors just in general are are looked at by the committee does that have an impact on on the program do they talk about that um how how does that that work over there uh in conway well i know the players and the coaches probably feel disrespected um you know and it's not like coastal's never going to have uh, a legitimate shot for the playoff. I think they know that, but mm. they have New Year's Six Bowl aspirations. Right. I mean, you know, it's, it's like uh, UCF in 2017 when they went to, I think it was the Peach Bowl. Yep. Um, so, you know, this, this team has New Year's Six aspirations. Um, but, I mean, yeah, they, they, they feel disrespected by the rankings. Um, I think people projected uh, Coastal a little higher, especially when you have schools like Iowa State ahead of them who got beat by 17 against a Sunbelt Louisiana team that Coastal then beat sure. a couple weeks later. Sure. Um, you know, you got some you got some Power 5 schools with two losses up in the rankings, and that's just how it's going to go. I mean, Power 5 schools are, uh, are going to get priority when it comes to those things. So the players feel disrespected, but at the end of the day, you know, head coach Jamie Chadwell always says, we got to control what we can control. Mm-hmm. You know, they can't control how the committee votes. Um you know they can just go out and win games and they got a game against troy on saturday before the sunbelt championship next week they got to go out win keep the undefeated record and you know see where the see where the ranking comes out next week you just being a college athletics fan not necessarily working for for the shots how do you feel about ohio state being fourth i i think this is a fascinating conversation to have because it's a conversation the committee is having for the first time because you just number of games being played has never been a question really until this season i'm just curious uh as a as a fellow sports fan uh what do you think about that yeah it's crazy i mean i think what the big Ten's going to end up doing is changing their rule just like the acc did to get clemson and notre dame in their championship game i think yeah. the big Ten, big Ten's going to have to do that because at the end of the day the conferences want their team in the playoff mm-hmm. um greatly you know from a from a money standpoint you know they need ohio state in the playoffs. So, you know, it's tough. I think uh, it's, you know, not all of it's on Ohio state because they've had games canceled by the other team. I mean, this was right. Michigan, you know, Michigan right. had a COVID issue and uh, they were the ones that canceled the game. It's not Ohio state's fault. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so that it's a tough question, but I think at the end of the day, the big 10 is going to end up changing the rule. So Ohio state can get in the championship game to give them a better chance at making the playoff. But I, I you know, I really hope, that we never have to deal with this situation again because it's so confusing to keep up with, um, you know, who's playing and who's not. And, you know, I I really don't think we will, but just a, just a crazy situation from a playoff standpoint. Yeah. And I, I I have a hard time being mad about it just because at the end of the day, I want to see the four best teams in college football in that playoff. Um, It happened a couple of years ago when, when Georgia almost beat Alabama in the SEC championship game, but because they lost, uh, they they were fifth in the in the rankings and didn't get a chance to play for a national championship, even though they were clearly the fourth best team in the country. Um, so it, I still think Ohio State is deserves from a talent and who's one of the four best teams in the sport perspective to be in that conversation. But of course, there are other variables to go through. Last question for you, Sam. Sports Reference does, has this tool that essentially gauges how much better a team is than they're supposed to be. And right now the shots are 14.99 points better than their average. What do you think makes this team so good from a perspective that, at least from from the statistics, from the personnel, that, that they always seem to put a, a larger sum on the field than than might be the actual sum of their parts what makes this team just click together that makes them so good well i can tell you that the number one reason in my in my eyes that we were picked last in the sun belt is because we didn't know who was going to be playing quarterback Mm -hmm. um we had a two quarterback system a year ago with bryce carpenter and fred payton 
and that team went five and seven. And this year we start redshirt fresh redshirt freshman Grayson McCall, who you know we people went into that Kansas game not knowing who was going to be quarterback. Mm-hmm. And Grayson McCall goes out to Kansas and has a fantastic game. And all of a sudden it's like, all right, Coastal's got a quarterback. Let's see what he can do. And I think that's really where everything kind of comes down to. And, and especially, you know, the defense playing well. It's a very mature defense. Mm-hmm. Um, you got Silas Kelly, our safety, redshirt senior, our linebacker, Teddy Gallagher, uh, senior, a whole, you know, seniors on the defensive line, C.J. Brewer, Teron Jackson. Uh, they're very senior heavy. So it's a lot of experience there. And then, you know, Grayson McCall, who's a redshirt freshman, still has a lot of years ahead of him, but sure. he's playing out of his mind. Yeah. Um, you know, he only passed for he only passed for 85 yards against BYU, but you saw some of the juke moves he's making with that triple option offense. Mm-hmm. I mean, he can really run that thing. So it really all comes down to the quarterback. I think you don't have Grayson McCall in there, and I don't know how well this team does. I know that we did win against Georgia Southern with Grayson McCall out. Fred Payton came in, and he, he got the job done, but – you know, we're we're putting points on the board, and I think that's all from Grayson McCall. He's got a great arm, uh, just very versatile. He can run. He is the center of all things in this offense, in this triple option offense. So he's been incredibly fun to watch. He should be in the Heisman conversation. He's obviously not going to be because it's coastal. Right. Um, but he is. Uh, he's been fun to watch this year, and I think that's really what it comes down to is we found a quarterback, and we're really – we are really writing the success of, of what he's doing. Twenty touchdowns, one interception, and a QBR eighty point nine. That's not that's not half bad. Sam, thank you so much, brother, for taking the time to uh, come and chat coastal with us. Uh, very much appreciate it. Hey, Josh, thanks for having me on, Chris. I know you can't hear me, but hello to you as well. And uh, let's hope that our dogs can get some more basketball games in this season. One of these days, right? <laughs> one of these days. Uh, all right, Sam. Take care, brother. Hey, you too, guys. See ya. That's Sam Wiederhaft uh, in the Coastal Carolina Athletic Department. Uh, Chris will join me uh, at the top of the hour coming up next for Humor Me, Please. You're watching 110 Daily on the 110 Sports Network.